Matt, Matt, very nice to meet you. Thank Welcome you. to RT in Ireland. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Elysium is big, you know, big old-fashioned, big budget, dystopian sci-fi action. But I'm guessing, knowing the type of guy you are off-screen, the story that Neil had about the message between the haves and the have-nots must be must have had even more resonance for you in taking on the role. Yeah, you know, it's not a message movie, and, mm. and Neil doesn't want to make movies like that yeah. at all. And, and uh, um, but but thematically, yeah, it's yeah. resonant certainly, um, and I think people will be able to relate to it. I mean, I certainly could, you know, when, I, when he showed me. This idea that he had, I thought, I thought it was so interesting, and and, and uh, you know, it's kind of a logical kind of conclusion to the thought. You know, if you like, if you if you look at the disparity, and if that just kept that chasm just kept widening, yeah. like where are we in 150 years? Yeah, one day. Some of us are up on a space station. Yeah. And most of us are, you know, yeah. uh, in a resource scarce, yeah. desperate planet. Yeah. You know? The fellow on my shirt is uh, the king of the method actors. He was pretty good. But even he might balk at the fact if he saw uh, exterior garbage and that, and, that <laughs> and that a place called Pooh River wasn't actually a metaphor. He, yeah, might, yeah. he might have sent in the stuntman, but you actually had to go and work in this environment for a few weeks and yeah, take yeah. all that was thrown at you in literal cases. So how was that experience and how did, it, how did it formulate your attitude even towards the people who were genuinely living there in reality? That was the thing. I mean, for us, we, were, you know, we could grouse about it, but, mm. but we'd go home to a nice hotel at night yeah. or go eat at a nice restaurant in Mexico City and um, you know there were 2,500 people who were actually living there in a self-sustaining community that basically uh, sorted the trash mm. and, and, and there were generations of children who were being born in a garbage dump and living in a garbage dump and, and living their lives there and never leaving and then dying there and, uh, and that was pretty arresting that was I mean I've seen a lot I've been a lot around in the third world and, and uh, but that was that was that was pretty desperate. Mm. How, how was working with, with uh, Jodie? I don't know there weren't many scenes between the two of you, but working with an actress of her caliber, that must raise, raise your game, no matter what, what situation you find yourself. She definitely classed up the joint. You know? <laughs> I mean, she, she's really, well, she's also a filmmaker, and yeah. so she's such the consummate professional. You know, she, you know, a lot of actors would go kind of back and forth to their trailer all mm. day. Jodie would come out, and she would come onto the set, and she, would, she just wouldn't leave, and I think, Maybe that's kind of habit of you know someone who's a director mm -hmm. who's just you know you know when 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 your shot isn't on camera to, you know that you're still you're still on set, um, uh, but it definitely changed the environment of the set because it was like we were being graced. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was yeah. cool. It was cool. It, it's a big change playing playing this guy this big muscly guy with the thing stuck into him to playing Michael Douglas's boyfriend in the Liberace movie. Which is Less than you think. <laughs> <laughs> so, but how excited are you for that? That looks, that looks a tremendous It's great. Experience. Yeah, I'm really excited. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go to Cam with it uh, yeah. next month. And so, uh, yeah, it's, I'm really happy with how it came out. And, and like you said, it's really different from, from, from this one. And, and, uh, and it just worked out that way. I mean, I shot them about a year apart. It's right. just that they, you know, this one had so many special effects that they've been you know, putting in, and it took so long that they're, they're kind of coming out right on the heels of one another. And just as a final quick question, did you manage to keep any of the costumes or the wigs, or, is, or should we keep that to ourselves? No, I, no we all, I always hold the wigs, because for instance, there's a wig, the wig that I wear in Liberace, the fourth wig that I wear, is actually the same wig that I wore in The Informant. You know, okay. recolored and re, you know, yeah. to be dyed and, 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 and cut a little bit and changed. But you know, a good wig that fits you perfectly, that's made for your head, is something you always you keep in your stable of stuff because uh, you never know when you're going to need it.